What's going on everyone and welcome to the channel. With deer season just weeks away, we got Jake from Third Coast Taxidermy here located in Plymouth, Michigan to help educate us on what we need to do in and out of the field to ensure that we get a high quality mount in the event that we get a deer down that we want taxidermy. We will also be giving away a European mount similar to the one that we have behind us here. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the video to figure out how you can get entered to win. If you are the lucky winner, all you need to do is drop the deer or the animal off to Jake. All expenses will be paid and we'll basically call you to come and pick it up. So like I said, make sure you stay tuned throughout the video to figure out how you can get entered. So with that said, I want to welcome Jake to the channel and then give him an opportunity to introduce himself. So Jake, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into taxidermy. Yeah, thanks Aaron and uh, welcome to Third Coast Taxidermy Studio. We're happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Jake Krogmeyer. I'm the owner and artist here at Third Coast Taxidermy Studio in Plymouth, Michigan. Um, and we specialize in mammals, uh, white-tailed deer make up the majority of our business, but we do uh, foxes, bear, coyote, uh, any mammal. Awesome, good deal. So Jake has seen a ton of horrific stuff. So um, the intent of this video is to help educate us as hunters to ensure that we are doing what we need to do in and out of the field to make Jake's job a lot easier and also to ensure that we're getting a high quality mount that is gonna last a lifetime. So I know back in 2019, when I got my first two deer mounted, it was the first deer that I had ever had a shoulder mount done and I was lost in the sense of trying to find a taxidermy locally. I was uh, very overwhelmed not knowing what the quality of that mount was going to look like and if it was going to hold up over time. So Jake, do you have anything that you can share uh, with someone uh, that's new to taxidermy that can help kind of vet out a local taxidermist in their area? Like what should we ask and what should we be looking for? Yeah, there's a lot of things that you can do uh, ahead of time. Uh, just like before we go into the woods to go hunting, um, we, we need to do our homework before we, uh, we, before we have that deer down on the ground. Uh, so calling around and talking to different taxidermists uh, and going to see some of their work is really important. Um, different people uh, have different skill levels and uh, not every taxidermist is the same. Um, you know, every deer is unique so the quality of every mount might vary from shop to shop. It's important to do your research ahead of time and look at photos, uh, but a lot of times mounts are hard to uh, really capture a lot of detail in photographs. So going to the shop and seeing the work firsthand uh, is really your best bet for uh, finding a taxidermist. Now, weren't you also involved in uh, an event recently in Grand Rapids that the MTA yeah, I was at the Soaring Eagle Casino. Uh, the Michigan Taxidermist Association uh, just had their competition uh, and show. And uh, so finding a taxidermist who participates in their state association has a couple of benefits. Um, taxidermists who compete and participate in their shows have their work judged by other taxidermists from their own state and from around the country. So they get feedback and their seminars uh, so that they're always improving, um, you know, and that's that's something that you want to look for as well. There's certainly good artists who um, don't participate, but um, really, uh, one of the best things that we can do as taxidermists to build our craft and increase our skill is to have critical review from other artists, mm -hmm. and it just it just makes you a lot better. Awesome, good deal. And then you also won a couple of awards, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, it was a good year. So, so awesome. had, had a lot of fun this year. Good deal, good deal. So let's kind of like fast forward a little bit and let's just assume that we've kind of completely vetted out a taxidermist. Let's say that we got a deer on the ground, we want to take it in, we want to do a shoulder mount on it. Um, what do we need to do out in the field to ensure that we're going to get that super high quality mount? So there's a couple of things because field care is very important. Um, there's a lot of things that taxidermists can fix, but there's some things uh, that we can't fix. Uh, so the first thing when your deer's down on the ground, uh, you wanna make sure that you field dress it right away uh, so that the body can start to cool off. Two things will cause hair to fall out, which is what we call slippage. Uh, moisture and heat. So you want the body to cool down as fast as possible, and you wanna be able to keep the animal dry. Um, that's very important. Also, you want to plan ahead as to how you're going to get the deer out of the field. 
Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with putting a strap or your, your harness on a deer and dragging it out of the field if you're not going to mount it. But if you shoot a deer that you're going to want to put on the wall and you drag it through the woods, um, you can do damage that can't necessarily be repaired. A lot of that deer's weight is going to be on the shoulders and as you drag that it's going to lose hair. Um, the other thing is where you're tying off on the deer. It's important not to um, tie anything around a deer's neck. Their hair is hollow. So a lot of times if you put a strap or a rope around the neck and then either drag them or hang them by the neck, you can crush that hair. And that's something that cannot always be repaired. The hair follicles can also twist, which would give us an unnatural hair pattern with some hair coming down and, and a, a different, you know, a stripe of it heading back. Uh, which we definitely want to avoid that okay all right and then like as far as like knife work goes like i know like if you want to do like a shoulder mount obviously it's always best to kind of stop at that sternum plate right definitely you want to stop at the sternum plate uh mounts over the last 20 or 30 years uh are showing more and more of the animal you know our grandpas might have got their their mount back and it would have part of the neck but we're into the shoulders and the legs now so um, it's important that you stop at that, uh, at that sternum area and, and don't proceed any further up. The other thing that you want to be careful of is how you're using your knife. Um, it's important to always have the blade of the knife pointed up um, so that you're not cutting through the hair. Yeah, so basically you're going under the skin and then pulling up, right? And then that, that yeah. hair is just going to kind of separate around that knife. I actually have an example of that. So this is uh, a piece of skin that's been tanned and here's what happens when you cut um, from the outside of the animal. What we want to see is the knife blade go in and then um, come up. There's actually another cut over here that was cut from the back of the skin and you can't see it here which makes that quite a bit um, easier for us to hide. Um, it's also easier for us to sew up seams. If, uh, if hair is cut like this, uh, we can repair that, but it's extra time, it's extra work, and it's also going to, uh, you know, it could shrink the size of your, your deer's neck yeah, uh, you on your mouth. You definitely don't want that. That's right. <laughs> so, so, like, in, in regards of, like, caping out a deer, so, like, obviously probably the best thing to do, and if you can, drag it out, use a cart, or use some type of sled. Like Jake said, don't don't put a rope around its neck and expect that you're going to get a super high quality mount. But like say, you know, mobile hunting right now, especially in Michigan, is like the new craze, right? People are going far, they're going deep. What if like dragging a deer is not really conducive for that type of hunt? Or like what if we're out west and we bag something? What's the best way to kind of like cape it out and ensure, again, that we're still getting a high quality mount? For sure. We can always cut more off later or when we get to the shop, but it's very difficult to add to. Um, you know, I've had several mounts brought in where um, the skin is several inches too short for the form. Now we either have to find hair that matches and sew it on, or we have to cut the entire form down, which adds to cost of the mount. Um, so one thing that you can do, is, the example that I like to give is um, skin the, the deer out uh, like it's a hoodie that's being taken off of the deer. So start um, down closer to the back legs and make an incision around. You can, you know, you'll have your, your split up to the, the sternum. Um, and then those are the only cuts you're gonna make until you get to the elbows. Um, you can cut at the elbows, but then you're gonna pull the rest of that skin off like you're taking a hoodie off. Okay. And, and work that around. <clears throat> But you want to tube the legs out if possible. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not uncommon for deer to come in from a, a deer processing shop where they're all cut up down here or hair or, or skin is missing. And we've got some things that we can do to trick that, but it never looks as good as if uh, one was appropriately skinned out and those legs were tubed out. It's going to take you a couple of extra minutes, but that deer is going to be hanging on your wall for 50 or 60 years and maybe your kids' walls after that. So it's really worth taking the extra, you know, two or three minutes to just tube those legs out down to the elbow. Maybe and so. as far as the neck goes, get up to where you, you're comfortable skinning to take the, uh, um, the neck roasts out if you want those, and then just cut the spinal cord. And if you can, if you're in state, leave the, the skull in 
and, and your taxidermist will take that out. Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat and everybody does things a little bit differently. So, um, you know, if you are hunting out of state and you need to bring uh, a cleaned skull plate back, uh, that's definitely something you'll want to talk to your taxidermist about. There's different styles of cuts up in the burrs um, that you can make and you'll want to see what your taxidermist wants you to use. Um, and they, they should give you a little bit of instruction on that. It'll make your life easier. It'll make their life a lot easier too. And then uh, one thing that Jake did mention is kind of the out of state hunt, that skull plate. Make sure that you're definitely checking to see what those regulations are because a lot of places will not allow you to bring a full head back home. So you do have to take the brain matter out because of the CWD that's kind of been crossing lines lately. So. A lot of states require that plate to be cleaned or boiled. Um, and the other thing is, is, as a taxidermist, I have a license by the state. Um, I can't take in any uh, anything that doesn't meet our laws. So if something is in violation, I can't take it because I put my business on the line oh, for it. That. So it, it is important just to do, just like we scout, just like we sharpen our, our broad heads and sight in our guns and, and we do our homework. That's something else we got to do our homework on. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. So say like we got the, we got the deer all caped out, it's all cleaned. What do we as hunters need to do next? Like, uh, what if we can't get it to a taxidermist right away? Like, what's the best next step to ensure, again, that we're getting that high quality mount? Yeah, so again, the two things we want to do is we want to make sure that the, the cape stays dry and the, the cape uh, stays as cool as possible. Um, I had a hunter shoot a large boar down in Oklahoma. He put it in, uh, triple bagged it in garbage bags, wrapped it up, put it in a cooler. In his cooler, he put down ice, cardboard, and then the triple bagged uh, uh, cape and, and closed the lid. He drove back from Oklahoma, and that cape arrived to me, and it was in great shape. Okay. Um, you know, I've had other hunters who will place the cape in the cooler on ice, um, but all of that moisture ends up ruining the cape. And uh, when all that hair falls out, then you're either looking at just doing a European mount or you're gonna to have to purchase a new cape, uh, which again, it adds cost and um, you know, it's not the same as your deer. Right, right, yeah, I was gonna say, nothing wrong with purchasing a cape, but yep, obviously you want it to look as close to as it was out in the field when you took the animal. Sure. So I know when I did mine, so I had just kind of put the whole thing in the freezer. I didn't triple bag it. Home freezers are good, um, but a deep freeze, uh, is much colder so if you are able to get it into a deep freeze that's best then you can take your time and figure it out um, you know it's not a problem to bring us something that's frozen solid um, we can always uh, tag it into our books thaw it out uh, and then go over it the one last thing that I'll bring up is if your deer has uh, a really good white uh, hair pattern on the throat or, or in the, uh, the armpits there um, it, if there's a lot of blood in that area, it's okay to wipe that off with a, um, like a wet paper towel um, and then wipe it up back off with a dry one. Um, that's okay, but what we don't want to see is uh, capes that have been hosed down or capes that were hung upside down and hosed out. If you do that, you also have to drain the head and the chest cavity out. All that water pools in the face and makes everything swell up and uh, that, that can affect the, the end quality. Yeah, I know I've been guilty of that before in the past, so. Okay, so like what, say like, you know, like we're, you know, we got a kid or uh, we're a disabled veteran and we're taking advantage of the youth or the Liberty Hunt. How does the whole uh, process change if we were to harvest like a velvet buck? Yeah, so velvet bucks, you know, um, there's not a ton of them on people's walls and they're definitely a statement piece. Um, but again, it's something where you need to have a taxidermist found ahead of time. Uh, there's a couple of different ways that different taxidermists will prepare those. Some send them off to be uh, have freeze drying uh, process done to the antlers. Some use a product called Velvalock, and others uh, use an injection process where they sit with a needle and they um, draw fluids out and inject other fluids in. Um, but that's something that velvet's very delicate, especially later in the season. Um, so, you know, too much handling uh, with warm hands, uh, grabbing it, it 
the tissue essentially bruises and can fall off. Um, and so it's very important that if you do shoot a velvet buck that you have a plan in place somewhere to take it. Um, you know, worst case scenario, if you can get it into a deep freeze at home until you find somewhere to go. Uh, but, you know, if your taxidermist wants to use Velvilock, it's good to know that because as soon as you finish gutting it, you can spray it down with Velvilock and you've already started the curing process, um, which, you know, getting good velvet um, is very possible. Uh, but you just have to plan ahead for that. Yeah, so if your taxidermist is recommending uh, Velvilock, then go go out, buy yourself a couple bottles, and make sure that it's in a part of your kill kit. As soon as you get that deer back to your vehicle, start spraying it down, and then it'll start that it'll start preserving that velvet. So then when you bring it in, it's really no issue. So for sure, and those bottles last for two years. So you know if you know you're going to be hunting youth season or disabled vet. Um, a couple of seasons you know one bottle lasted two years so. okay that's good to know i didn't know that yep. so like what about like say you know like we get the mount home when should i clean it how often should i clean it and what's the best way to clean it sure so um you know the best thing to do is just keep an eye on it if it looks dusty you can clean it but if it doesn't look dusty uh leave well enough alone you know don't touch it there's a lot of sensitive areas the nose the lips the eyes where there's paint that's been applied and if that's chipped, it's difficult to uh, replace um, and, and, and blend that in. So um, if you do need to clean it, uh, again, talk to the tax terms that you've, you've, uh, that you've used. Um, a microfiber cloth, very gently, or even compressed air um, is always you, you know, an okay way, but you wanna be very gentle with it. There are different products that they sell um, to clean, but a lot of times those are for mounts that were maybe at, you know, grandpa's house where he smoked for 20 years. Um, so those are for more of a deep clean on, on older mounts. Um, but one thing you definitely want to do is you want to make sure that your mounts are out of direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. uh, direct sunlight will fade uh, the hair of the deer and the paintwork on them. I also heard that you're not supposed to put them by fireplaces either. Yeah, any, any extremes, right? So if you've got a drafty window um, or a, a picture window, you know, you don't want them getting too cold. Uh, if they're right by uh, a fireplace that's not ventilated well, um, all that dry air all the time could lead to some uh, extra shrinking and cracking. Um, you know, so it, it, you want to find the, the right place in your house beforehand. Yeah, yeah, so pick a wall out and, and have it in the back of your head and that's where you're going to mount that's it right. so like so you also do like so if someone were to bring a mount to you you also offer like some type of cleaning service don't you sure so you know um any of my customers if they're uh concerned about something if they chip their paint uh you know if uh, something gets too dusty and they don't want to handle it they can always bring it back to me um but you know sometimes you've had a mount on the wall for 20 or 30 years and it needs a refresh um, you know, it's very possible to freshen up the noses and the eyes, um, you know, and that can be as simple as reglazing things and uh, a good deep clean, uh, or it can be repainting things, you know. Uh, 20, 30 years ago, uh, a lot of detail was left out and epoxy was used um, to fill almost everything. Uh, so, you know, we can't undo that, but we can certainly make them look like they were new when they came home. All right, everyone, so that's going to wrap it up for the video. I hope you guys found this educational. If you guys have any questions, you can always leave me a comment below. Uh, but if you have any questions directly related to taxidermy, I would highly encourage that you reach out to Jake. Uh, I will make sure to put a link to his Facebook page in the description below. Um, and like I said, just reach out to him. He'll be happy to help. And like I said, I'm always happy to try to help as well. Now, as far as the giveaway goes, there's a couple things that you need to do to get entered. Uh, the first one is, is you need to be a subscriber of the Michigan Ambush Outdoors uh, YouTube channel. And then you need to also go over and follow Jake's Facebook page. Again, that link will be in the description. And then you also need to leave a comment. To get a second entry in, we will make a post to our Instagram page. All you need to do is share that post, tag Michigan Ambush Outdoors. And again, you will get a second entry in to win the European Mount. And we're actually going to open this up for a buck, a doe, a fox, or a coyote. So if you happen to get any one of those animals, they're gonna qualify. And we're gonna leave this giveaway open until the end of the season, which is December 31st here in Michigan. Now, if you happen to get an animal, say early season, October, uh, you wanna bring it to Jake uh, and wait to see if you win, 
Um, that's perfectly fine. Basically, uh, you would have to pay Jake up front, but then we will reimburse you at the end. And all that's required of you is to actually just bring the head of the animal uh, to Jake and then we'll take care of the rest. Uh, and it's just a way to, to, to thank you and show our appreciation uh, that you support the channel and support Jake's uh, taxidermy business. Uh, and that's going to be it for the video. But Jake, you got anything to add before we close? Shoot straight. Shoot straight. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you guys on the next one.